Good morning to everybody. Enough palaver. We don't have our instant uh, replay still. No, our little sound machines. Our infernal sound machine. With my sound machine, I rule the world. But they found the instant replays. They found them in Tennessee. In Tennessee, and they're shipping them back to New York just in time for us to ship them back to Washington because I guess we have rescheduled. Yeah. Rescheduled, rescheduled our uh, our Washington trip. I guess we're going to go Monday and Tuesday. Next week. Next yeah. Monday and Postpone Tuesday. Postpone a week. One week. Ben is back in New York City. Yes, he is. Doing the herky-jerk in the office. It was good to see him again. It really was. I came walking in this morning uh, around the corner, looked through our huge glass wall into the office, and saw his, Ben's huge head just <laughs> bobbing up and down in front of his computer screen. I felt good. My God, oh, our Ben is back. Good old Ben. Yeah. Ben E. W. All right. Well, we got lots to do today, huh? Oh, yeah. Plenty of stuff cooking. I was just telling you that I caught the uh, the mouse. Yeah, yeah. And well, my brother, it was pretty... Mouse problem. It was kind of funny. <clears throat> Notice I said, I, I, I corrected myself. I was ready to say pretty funny. Uh, well, pretty funny. I, I want to lower the expectations here right off the bat. But uh, yeah. There's no humor in this whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Let me continue. I dare you to laugh. <laughs> I dare you to laugh at tsunami songs. <laughs> oh, oh. We'll get into that in a minute or fired. two. <laughs> so fired. So fired. Should we just jump into that instead of the stupid mouse story? Because uh, that's the thing. Yeah, we like that... to start the radio show with the big thing that um, that that uh, that finds our interest, you know? Well, that is pretty big because we've been through it. Oh, my God. We can feel for any radio show that's going to... That uh, is going to get fired. You know what, though? I I don't have any sympathy. I'm not like, saying... I don't care. I don't care that they played this uh, tsunami song and, and upset a bunch of people, and now the news is picking up on it. It's not like I'm, I'm upset by the tsunami song or anything, but I don't have any sympathy for other jocks that screw up and are on the verge of being fired. I almost enjoy it because we've been through it so much. I, misery enjoys we've company. Been, uh, so. We've been through it twice, mm -hmm. and we know all the signs. And oh, the signs is... are starting to happen to this morning show here in New York City, Hot 97. And Anthony and I, our expert opinion uh, as yeah. far as uh, getting fired goes, fired, so fired. Fired, fired, fired. With a so fired. Oh, big red capital F, fired. And people don't understand that. There's fired, and yeah. then there's so fired. Oh. <laughs> this is completely and totally fired. Yeah, I think so. It's one of those situations where uh, we've seen it before. You do something on the air. It doesn't matter what it is. You do something on the air. It's controversial. It's offensive. It upsets people. Whatever. Uh, now, you're part of the show that did it. So you're very close to the situation. So things happen very quickly to you, the crew of the show, and your bosses. You get together. You have your little powwows. And then you go home and you sit. And, and you wait. think, and you think to yourself, I think we might skate this because I'm really not hearing anything. There's no buzz, but you're so close to it that no one else has really heard about it yet. So a day or two later, that's when these little signs start popping up: newspaper stories, press coverage. Maybe Fox News picks it up, and that's the phase that they're in right now. As a DJ, you never want to be at home. And they're mm. teasing the 10 o'clock news. Yeah, yeah. Coming up at 10 o'clock, hate radio in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you more. Stay tuned. And then weather. Oh, you're like, oh, Pretty much no. at that point, Anthony calls me or I call him like, oh, uh oh no. strap in. Are you, dude, are you watching? <laughs> right. That's me. Dude, are you watching Channel 5? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, we're screwed. <laughs> we're so screwed. Oh, they picked up on the story. We're so screwed. Uh, no, I'll stay on the phone. I'll stay on the phone. Yeah, let's watch this together. And then we watch it just going. And all you hear during the broadcast is, oh, oh just us groaning. That and uh, where did they find that video clip from? That's got to be 15 years old. That's so old. <laughs> I Dude. haven't had long hair in a decade. If I didn't think we were so fired, this would be great. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it sucks because we're so fired. And then you, uh, you wake up the next day and you go to the corner store to get your uh. newspapers. And then you see your mug in the newspaper. Yeah, the story's there. And, and then you're like, oh, who else has this story? And and you, you hope that it's just going to, that'll be it. They did a thing on the news. Yeah, we got some press, and it goes away the next day. 
Sometimes it goes away. Sometimes it don't go away. <laughs> uh, usually it doesn't go away, and it just builds. This is the snowball effect, we call it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it builds, and it builds, and it builds. More people get upset. And then the worst part is now people that never even heard it are reading the stories, and now they're getting pissed off and writing letters, and they didn't even hear it. But they read the accounts, get all pissed off, well, and you're done, fired, fired, fired. This particular tsunami song, well, and the outrage is hitting all the Chinese news organizations around yes. the world. It's not like there's a lot of Chinese people in the world. No, not too many. <laughs> I, I hear, I hear they're uh, really cutting down on Chinese people. Yeah. Uh, it's on. It's on the the front page of Drudge. Yep. Drudge oh. Report, which is just everyone goes to Drudge. Oh. Uh, I'm sure the the trade sites are picking up on it, all the radio trade sites, and then in the uh, in the New York newspapers. You know, you turn the page. Ovi brought up a, a pretty good point with the uh, the newspaper there. Well, <laughs> and you the know, placement in Newsday. Yeah, you never want to be pretty much the third story, mm -hmm. where the first story is uh, you know coffins from well, Iraq. Well, it's the it's the front page headline right. on Newsday, it shows coffins heading back from Iraq. So now you flip the page. Which is like, you know, the I mean, that's just a hor horrendous, horrendous, uh, you know, story. I, and I'm glad they're finally showing the coffins with the uh, the flags uh, draped on them, yeah. by the way. Because, you know, the, the government likes to, to hide the fact that uh, actually this is a huge tragedy for a lot of people and families. You uh, know? They acknowledge that people are dying over there, but they certainly don't want any, they don't want to show it. In any way, shape, or form, no funerals, no coffins coming back, nothing. Which, uh, which is just uh, absolutely horrific that mm. they don't allow, allow that. And then, um, then there's the C train disaster here in New York City. S somehow, a homeless guy got into a switching room uh -huh. and lit a fire and burnt, uh, burnt up all these relays and stuff. And it's an ancient switching room, is what they're saying. Right. It's been there forever. Was a homeless guy living in there? I don't know. He went in there probably to get warm, lit a fire. It got out of control and burnt up the switching room. Ah, he was living in there because uh, we did a whole thing on the mole people. Yeah, they, they, they find places to live down There's in the, in thousands the and thousands of people that live below the streets of New York City. The whole society. Thousands. It's a whole society. They come up during the day to do... You know, menial tasks and jobs, you know. Panhandle. Uh, panhandle, do all supplies. that. And then at night, uh, there's some manhole covers all over the city where you could sit there and watch the people go back underground. Mm -hmm. They go into the subways. And the reason that uh, the, the city is leaving these people alone down there, it would just be a major, major headache for the city if they decided to let, you know, to get all these people out from underground because then uh -huh. they would have to find housing yeah. or these people would be walking the streets and bothering all the. Uh, you know, the suits out there. So they just let them live. They just let them live down there. Yeah. And they start little fires and stuff. And in this case... Some of them have, like, oh, uh, imp improvised housing down there. They build these wooden frames, put burlap over them or something. They're shanties. Yeah, and then, yeah, and there's a whole... There's whole towns down there. There's a whole... There's an old Amtrak track mm -hmm. they don't use anymore. And that's one of the big ones. I mean, this yep. is a huge tunnel that they just haven't used in many, many years. And and supposedly there's thousands of them down in that Some area Some of the alone. smart ones have tapped into electric, so mm -hmm. they have power down there. And it's like uh, it's like Thunderdome. Yeah. Master Blaster runs it down They have there. a mayor. I heard they have a mayor. They have, like, uh, like weird officials they elect is down there. Is there some kind of hierarchy? Yeah. Bob showed me, because we live on 40, I'll tell you, 43rd Street, and there's train tracks running by, and he's like, that's where the mole people come out, and you can look down and see yeah. that there's, like, a little weird As area. As a tear runs down Bob's cheek because yeah. he's upset that they have to live like that. <laughs> poor people have nowhere to go. Blubbering <laughs> jackass. <laughs> Yeah, but there's areas in New York City that people know that the, the mole people come out, and you can watch them come out for the day and then go back down, you know, at night. Yeah. So and this guy lit a fire, burnt up this relay room, and you're thinking, all right, uh, they just got to go down there and fix it. How long could it take? They're saying three to five years. Three to five years to three get Three to five years to fix it, to get the sea line working again. It's going to be out of commission three to five years and that will affect about a hundred and ten thousand daily uh, passengers people a day and some guy on uh, I was listening to the news on the way and brought up a good point he goes you know everyone's all up in arms about terrorism and some homeless guy shuts down an entire subway line for three to five years where's the security at these switching uh, stations right well, there's we have there are so many vulnerabilities in this city that they can never ever put enough security on. I, I think it's just a matter of, of where and when, you know? Mm-hmm.
when they strike next. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Homeless guy knocks out an entire subway line for three to five years. And then uh, the third... I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was cold. My golden buns was cold. <laughs> to be Tom, everybody. I didn't light the fire. <laughs> <laughs> you I said I him. could dance on the stage. <laughs> I was dancing on the stage naked, and it burst into flames. I saw the train coming. <laughs> You said I could dance on the <laughs> stage. What stage, Tippy? All right, I'm going to jerk it. Oh, that was hilarious. So then the third story, getting back to um, how this started here, is uh, Hot 97 in Trouble over Tsunami Song, Anthony. Oof. And uh, and that's what I was trying to say. You know, you don't want to be, you know, the, the coffin's coming back from Iraq, sea train, disaster, and then your little morning show is pretty much the uh, the next hot story right when for you the flip, day. Uh, flip over that front page. There it is. Uh, call for federal fines. More apologies after station airs. We are the world parody. Federal fines for what? For what? Offensive to Asians. Uh, this song is obviously. I understand how they can be upset. They can even be fired because the station doesn't want an offensive show like sure. that on their airwaves. But as far as the FCC being involved, this is where people are delusional they have no concept of what the fcc is for they are not there to remove or find programming that people find offensive because of some political content or some uh you know, offensive content as far as race goes they're there to police the airwaves for sexual content so what it's that's what it says it's it's titillating content Double entendre that goes too far as far as weenies go. That's what they're there for. People are offended by uh, that programming because they, they uh, ragged on the tsunami and, and its victims. That's not an FCC. You can't federally fine people for that. That is a complete freedom of speech yep. issue. You, but please, don't, don't, you know, don't say I'm agreeing with these people. Although, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, you can't fine them for it. You can't find them for it. <laughs> despite an on-air, uh, despite on-air apologies from uh, the morning team, the station yes, uh, and the station yesterday, council members and Asian American leaders called for federal fines. A stronger apology. A stronger apology. Stronger. How do you? Yeah. I really apologize. <laughs> I apologized before, but it was kind of like I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> well, wish you was. I apologize. They want them to apologize from a gym or something with a, <laughs> with a trainer While nearby. Bench pressing. <laughs> apologize with a cape on. Is I it, apologize with your hands on your hips. I don't get that. Uh, an apology is an apology. What's a stronger apology? A stronger apology equals more insincere apology because it's never sincere. When you when you're a radio guy and you have to apologize for something you did, it's never sincere because you actually when you first did it. You were enjoying what you did. It was funny. You found it funny. Everyone's laughing and laughing. Do they have the audio of me apologizing after the mayor prank? Because that's really funny. Oh, we both were like, yeah. Eric, do we have the, the Boston the mayor prank? We apologize to the mayor, mayor and his family. family. It was like, oh, do we have to be bothered? <laughs> that's exactly my tone. It tell. was the worst. A camera is stuck in my face. You know, the famous mayor's prank that we did in Boston. And, and uh, we're walking out of our uh, studio there. And... Uh, <laughs> And we're in a, a building on, like, whatever, I forgot what floor, third, fourth floor. Yeah. And the camera crews were right there near the elevators. They come running from around a the corner. They got cameras in our faces. Are you going to apologize to the mayor and his family? So I look into the oh. camera all goofy, looking like I just stepped off a beach from California, going, <clears throat> I apologize to the mayor and his family. Uh, yeah, because he said, are you going to apologize to the mayor and his family? Yeah. And you went, I apologize <laughs> to the mayor and his family. <laughs> Oh, uh, and I, I and and me, I'm all dopey. I, I said something like, "Well, you know, if the mayor was upset by this, <laughs> right. like I'm putting a condition on my apology. <laughs> you know, if he wasn't upset, then screw it. I'm not going to apologize. But, all right, if he was upset, and then I have to say, laughing the whole time, who knew the mayor and his family were fans of the fans of the show? show. <laughs> oh, get the bring on the pies, idiots! Bring on the pies." That's it. Oh, and they're backpedaling over there. At, uh, All right, 97. so they're calling for federal fines, a stronger apology, and for the hip-hop station to fire its morning crew. There you go, calling there for the firing. Go. 
Well, they actually, their apology wasn't sincere because they came out and they said, we're 97, we play joke. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is great, man. The song, oh, yeah. to the melody of We Are the World, was played several times since January 18th until, until it was halted Friday amid complaints. They got away with playing this thing a lot. Yeah, but look who the complaints from. Uh, one hung low. <laughs> Can't be real. John Liu. Oh, it's John Liu. Proceeds from the original song, <laughs> recorded in 1985, were used for f a famine relief in Africa, yes. Hmm. Which makes it kind of worse for some people, I guess. The parody's lyrics make reference to 20-foot waves and contain racial epithets. Uh, in addition to Miss Jones, the other on-air crew includes DJ Envy, Todd Lynn, and Miss Info, a Korean-American woman who was heard on-air registering opposition to the song Ms. when it was first Info. aired. We played that la uh, yesterday. Yes, their little argument on the air. Miss Info. Hey, Count she was smart. She got out of the whole thing. I, you know what? I respect her for you know speaking her mind. I definitely respect her for speaking her mind. I, I mean, the song is hacky. It's It's awful, actually. It's not even funny, really. And uh, and she didn't want any part of it. I don't know. My problem with her, although I agree with you, she did speak her mind. Was that it was too? She, they they were so annoyed at her because obviously every time something like this comes up, she backs out. Like if this was the right. only case where she's like, nah, this is just not funny. I don't like it. Perhaps she just wants to keep her job. Good point. Good point. You know, it's a little rough when you you're uh, involved in a show like that, where you know you're doing things that could potentially be offensive to people, and it's rough to be involved in that and and. Not worry about your job all the time. That's true. But, on the other hand, then don't be involved with that show. You know, then find yourself another job on one of those cutesy morning shows where they never get in trouble. Well, there's a councilman, John Liu, that's, um, you know, you know, the leader of this, uh, of this, of this complaint. Falun and, Gong. And, and he says, did he really say this? This is utterly irre irreprehensible. Ir I know. It shouldn't be... Uh, reprehensible. Just right. reprehensible. No ear is yes. needed in front of that. This is utterly irreprehensible. irreprehensible. That means there's no way it can be reprehensible again. It's it's been reprehensible and it cannot happen it again can, because it's irreprehensible. That's where to blast the stereotypes, stupid. This will never again be reprehensible. <laughs> never. It degrades the more than two hundred thousand um, two hundred thousand. Victims, it demeans all of us here in New York City and throughout the world who are engaged in trying to help these victims of the tsunami and its insult to humankind itself. These people are so fired. They caught up with Mr. Liu uh, riding a bike with a big basket on the front full of wonton soup and fried <laughs> rice to shove menus under doors. Those guys are out in full force. It's a blizzard here in New York City. Oh, you got to go. What a work ethic. But the what a, a work ethic. Asian guys Asian are town. still on their bikes attempting to deliver food to us. Did you see the picture in the, this is even worse, in the Daily News? It's a picture of uh, how could they make fun of such a tragedy on page five. It's a picture of Miss Jones with her hands on her hips. And then the picture behind it is all the, the washed out tsunami area. It's like, it looks wreckage. Like, it looks like Hiroshima after the bomb drop. Right, yeah. And here she is just standing there with her hands on her hips smiling. That's Looking <laughs> all sassy. <laughs> Almost like, look what I did. Scenes of death and destruction in Banda Aham, whatever, Indonesia, are hilarious, right? Apparently the Hot 97 DJ, oh, no. Miss Jones... Uh, it says are hilarious, right? Yeah, with the little comma and the question mark. It's even worded properly. Oof. Oh, she is irreprehensible. Bad. Totally irreprehensible. And this Asian guy, John Liu, have you ever heard of him before? No. That's why he's a problem. This ah. is the first time anybody's ever listened to him. This yeah. is the first cause he's ever been able to latch so on to. now he's really going to push it. Yeah. He shan't go away. Yeah, no, he, they're in trouble. So this is cute. The other thing, because uh, we are experts at this, uh, like Anthony was saying earlier, um... The station posted an apology on the station's website. Oh, yeah. And they also uh, made the whole morning crew donate a week's salary to the tsunami survivors. Well, that'll work. Or the tsunami relief efforts. Because management's plans to get the show out of trouble always succeeds, doesn't it? <laughs> Stop it. Stop with the, the... You're grabbing at straws. You are grabbing at straws. The best thing management in this situation can do, and we know this... We know this. You put the show on the air and let them do the show. Yep. That's it. Ride it out because it will go away. The more you make of it, the more other people make of it. The more you make of it, the more they pick apart what you're making of it and make it worse. Just d let your show do the show. But that never happens, by no. the way. No, it never happens. 
Well, did you hear the suggestion management gave? They said that they wanted to have tsunami victims come and put them in stocks, and then the, the uh, tsunami victims would throw egg rolls at their heads. <laughs> I heard that they were doing that, and they actually even bought the egg rolls. And uh, now, now uh, they're well, not going to do that, so they have to take it to a children's hospital and hand the egg rolls out to terminally ill children. And our old program director, Dave Dickless, wonders why he's not in radio anymore. Yeah. Good move, now Dave. we got to bring everyone up to speed. Basically, after we did the mayor's prank, yeah. his uh, great idea to get us out of trouble was to put us in stocks in the middle of Boston, Faneuil Hall there. Yeah, and have the mayor throw pies at our face. And have the mayor throw pies at our face in front of, you know, probably thousands of our yeah. insane listeners. Yeah, big press event, and that'll get us out of trouble with the mayor. Ant wrong, didn't work. They, they canceled that idea because me and Opie got on the air and said, we are not going to go in, in, and do this. Dave got all mad. And then we fi they figured they bought the pies already, so they figured another PR move is to have me and Opie go down to a children's hospital and hand the pies out to terminally ill kids <laughs> while a photographer snapped away and put it in the paper. And when we got there, we felt all bad that they were doing this. We see the poor little sick kids walking around, and we, we didn't want to use them as pawns in our way to get out of trouble, so we just kind of you know gave them the pies, told the photographer to get lost, and uh, left that event and, and got fired. And, and then we took our beating. The end of this article never says, works, though. Anything management comes up with does well, not work. That's the point. Yeah, we're uh, we're making here. Um, and then finally, this quote at the end of the article, which just means they're so fired. We have to go after the station's advertisers. Yay! There. Good that night. That'll get the fear. Good night. Yep. Yeah, because uh, all your adver advertisers are going to have sympathy for the fact that you uh, made fun of. The tsunami victims. Good night. And that's the reason they're fired, not because of the FCC. Mm -hmm. That's a rough one, too, man. We, we listened to that yesterday. It's like, hey, look, I believe people say, but you want freedom of speech, but that's a rough one. So if you're going to go after the tsunami, do it. But you got to be a little bit subtle about it. How many, um, how many complaints do you think are uh, going into grape soda and Cheetos uh, places? <laughs> <laughs> the KFC is outraged. <laughs> Well, here's the song everyone's talking about, Anthony. We also failed to mention that our old producer uh, is, is producing this morning show. Oh, right. <laughs> and we know damn well that he wrote this thing. We have no, we, uh, you know, I have no doubt in my mind that Rick wrote most of this song. I he's will on bank the, on it. He's on the lead vocals just singing his little lungs out. <laughs> <laughs> I will bank on Rick penning this one. I guarantee our old producer wrote this, or most of it. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee also he's really pissed off that his name's not being mentioned in all these articles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just saying the crew of the show. The crew. So, uh, you know, to be fair, the song just stinks. It is really bad. It's not even, uh, it's just not entertaining at all. No. You know, I mean, taking away what they're singing about and all that, mm -hmm. there's, there's no real comedic value to this thing at all. If you were to write a, a tsunami song parody, what would you focus on? To make it funny. Mm, you know? The fact that they were saving the white people first. Yep. Yeah, stuff the, like that is the good. The fact that uh, people refused to uh, cancel their vacations and were sunning themselves on the same beaches that l thousands of people lost their lives. That's pretty good. A week good. prior. Uh-huh. Um, Not bad. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. I would focus on the child slavery and the fact that people had sticks going through their heads. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you're perfect for the Hot 97 show. What, <laughs> what, do you have a, a copy of their official apology? Yes. This is the official statement from <clears> the, <throat> the morning crew there? And you know that they sat down with management. Actually, management just sat down. The, the show itself is never involved with the apology statement. We know this also. Statements get put out all the time. We... We're not involved in one statement that went out. They keep the show away, management, and some you know, corporate-level douchebag uh, PR person writes these things up. And every word is calculated. Hot 97 regrets the airing of material that made light of a serious and tragic event. We apologize to our listeners and anyone who was offended. Both Hot 97's program director and Miss Jones issued on-air apologies on Monday, stating that the material was offensive and should not have been aired. Now, here's the look what we do, uh, so you can't be that mad at us because we're really good people line, which they always throw in. Hot 97 takes pride in its community involvement, and in the last few weeks has joined with broadcasters nationwide to raise money for victims of the tsunami. 
Our relief effort will result in a substantial cash donation. That last sentence is insulting. People reading this will go, oh, now you're trying to get off the hook by saying a substantial cash. Substantial in, how are you measuring substantial? In the money that's been sent over there already? Billions of dollars <laughs> from other countries? Pretty much a drop in the bucket, Hot 97. Nice that you're doing that, but this amounts to taking pies to terminally sick children. It ain't going to work. The apologies never work. You should just not say a word, put the show back on the air. It will die out in a couple of weeks at most. But no, they're going to make a stink. The people that are, you know, want them fired are going to make a big stink. And management's going to get all shaky about, uh, about sponsors being, uh, pulling their ads. They're fired Got by a fire. They're fired by Friday. I, I, I actually have a mathematic formula that I, I just fill in different names of, of jocks that screw up. That is so <laughs> bad. The, parody was the next couple of days, Pat's temperature Rumble. is going to stay oh, well above on. normal after a couple of days up. well below normal. Here's a look at your extended forecast uh -oh. for tomorrow. Sunshine, 60 degrees, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Wow, see temperatures pop. in the low two 60s. For Tuesday. <laughs> mostly sunny. Two for Tuesday. Two for Tuesday. Broadcasters, effing <laughs> up. You're two, two, two for Tuesday. That's right. Hey, let me back sell that. You heard screaming chinks <laughs> and Martin Luther Coon. <laughs> On our two for Tuesday racism. My CD player was on continue play. Yes, Sorry. it was. But it worked out perfectly. It was us. on continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awful. They are so, oh. so fired. When that g screaming chink line comes in, it's just, oh, that is the worst. Yeah. Oh, you. Oof. A couple of lines you could have just fixed and made it, like, offensive, but not where they could grab on to anything. But yeah. No, nah, it's, it's just, uh, yeah. yeah. Brian from Jersey. What's up, Brian? Hey, O and A. What's going on? Hey, Sugar Tits. Although they Hi, never Brian. used gook, which was kind you of you know, yeah, sensitive. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hey, what's going on? I finally got my virus back. Listen, I'm watching the news this morning, getting ready for work. Channel 11 actually playing the song. These guys are so screwed. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So Fire. Everything. They played the part, part of the, the song? It was the part they actually screamed. They played on, the, on Channel 11's news uh, this morning. Did they play Screaming Chink or Chinaman? Uh, sorry, guys, I can't hear you too good. I'm ah. All right, bye, Brian. Damn it. Uh, the, the last thing before we move on, mm -hmm. somehow we'll, we'll be mentioned in this. Oh, guaranteed. Because every time um, a DJ messes up these days, they have to bring up all the other DJs that messed up. Yep. And guess who's at the top of the list, everybody? Us. Number one with a bullet. Is, is the phone screwed up where they won't hear me? Is that what it is? Because we better take care of that. Because oh, no. that guy couldn't hear me. He couldn't hear you at all? I, I think not. Let's uh, take another call and say. All right, Max. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Max, can you, there, Max, can you hear me? Hey, Max, can you yep. hear me? Can hear, I can hear you barely. Oh, uh, barely. barely. See, there's a little problem with my volume. Hey, what's Max! Up? What's up, guys? Uh, got a question for you. Here in two years, will we be able to subscribe to their uh, program on XM Radio? <laughs> uh, no, and, uh, the only re hold on, I'll, I'll answer that. The only reason Anthony and I were able to move on with our careers is because we do have... I'm checking out. All right, whatever. <laughs> See, there's a problem with the phones. Yeah. They're hearing us really low. Holy ass, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. I'm going to lose my mind. The, uh... It is hard enough to do a radio show every morning. This stuff has to work every morning. And I don't understand how it works the day before, and it doesn't work the next day. How is that? Emergency. We have, we can't, the guys on the phones can't hear us. It's very low. Can't hear Opie either. It's all very low. Ben? Ben comes in and stares Anything? at the board. Like, you know what button to push here to, to fix this problem. Just let him herk and jerk and hit some buttons. He'll hit something. Uh, fix it. What are you going to hit, Ben? There you go. Ben yeah. just comes in and starts staring at the board like he knows what's going on. I know you know what's going on, but you don't know this. Anything? The phone callers. This is high-tech crap. They hear us very low. <coughs> and then they start talking when we try to talk to them. And it gets very upsetting when they go, ah, I can't hear you. I'm punching out. One of these? Ben, what are you doing? One of what? One of what? Ben's pointing at stuff. So one goes, of these. One of these. One of these. He pointed at a cluster of 18 buttons <laughs> and dials and switches. One of these. One of these. Oh, should I try one more? You know, this is, uh, 
Unfortunately, we need the phones uh, this break. Yeah, here. and the only way it's to do it is It's a very interactive part of the program here. Doug from Connecticut. Hey, Gravy Boobs, how you doing? All right, now, now, can you hear hey, us? Hey, um, so, my theory also see, is they're that, trying to do something out there. Doesn't that make you want to oh, bite hey, your own friggin' head off when that happens? Hey, 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 Doug, you can't hear us very well, can you? Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. Maybe this guy's just a dope. He's stupid. Doug, are you just a dope, or 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 do we have a real problem here today? No, seriously, I can hear you both really good. All right, then you're I just a dope. Problem. All right, it's Doug. He's just a dope. So he was a dope for talking over us while we we're trying to talk. All right, Doug, thank you. We didn't really care what you had today. We just uh, wanted we're to use you to, to your, see if the phones work. Your call was just being used to test the phones. How do you feel today? You stink. I was actually going to call you from out here. Is it fixed? Oh, you were? Do you, you hear how we do a prank? No, to just <laughs> well, yeah, cover the can. <laughs> <laughs> you better let him out. And then wave at you. Hi, guys. 